So, a uh, really quick discussion on something I don't think it's stressed enough out there and gets overlooked by a lot of people getting into electronics hobbies. So, I have here my Rigel DS1052E scope. This is a, a new addition. I had an analog scope before this. Um, what I'd like to talk about real quick is isolation transformers. So, what, I'm, what I have here on the bench is my Arduino board and a little rover and uh, I've done various PWM scoping uh, with the oscilloscope for the motor drives. No problem. Uh, no issues. Nothing to worry about. What happens, and I've seen this on the net, if you, if you just search around for some live, test or live testing or whatever, it's pretty clear sometimes that uh, you'll see in the background, if you look real close, you'll see the scope and a component plugged into the same place. On something like an Arduino here, no problem. Uh, this thing doesn't plug into mains power. What can happen with these scopes is if you move into scoping something, this is a really bad example, but it's all I've got laying around. This is a coffee maker control board. This thing was tied directly to mains power. Using an oscilloscope on something that is tied directly to mains power or working on anything when this is hooked up and you're testing live to mains power just to your house is extremely, extremely dangerous. What you need is an isolation transformer. I won't go in depth because there's a good explanation. I'll post the link. There was a fine gentleman posted a huge long video, uh, explained it start to finish flawlessly. I could never compete with that. But just to get this out to my subscribers. This thing's plugged into mains power. If you touch a point on this circuit, your feet are on ground, potentially. You have now made a reference path to ground through you. Extremely dangerous obvious for obvious reasons so what you get is an isolation transformer what it does uh, it just it simply your component being tested would plug into the secondary side of the transformer the primary side would be plugged to mains power there is no gra ground reference then for the component you're being you're working on to the actual ground to what you're standing on or the water frame, water pipe frame, whatever that's nearby. You are completely isolated from ground. Therefore, unless you bias yourself across two points on there, touching one point in the circuit, you can't make a ground path. Therefore, keeping you far more safe. Not fully safe, ever, but more safe. Now, that being said, that's a tech version only, and I'll post a link to the video that explains the difference, but uh, if you buy one over the counter, you need to be very careful that you don't just assume you're safe because the non-tech versions are biased to ground, are referenced to ground on the secondary side due to noise and filtering and lots of reasons. You need to do a modification and remove that ground to make yourself safe. So, um, that pretty much will keep you from creating a ground loop. Um, so moving beyond that, if you hook your probe up, important thing to remember, these probes, these BNC connectors, are reference to mains ground. Your scope's still going to be plugged into household current. It's still going to be reference to ground on that BNC. Therefore, once you hook your scope up into the circuit, you have now made a ground reference. Your scope is now the secondary ground, is the new neutral for that circuit. So your personal safety that we just talked about essentially goes away once you're plugged in. You're no longer completely isolated from ground. Your scope is a path to ground. Further than that, you can now work on it and, and and probe to your heart's content, but something else can happen. If you move into using a second probe, using channel 2 on your scope, if you ground both leads to the same point on the circuit, no issue. The problem can come in is if you accidentally, if you hook this on a ground point on the circuit, and then you hook to this something that wasn't directly biased to ground, was not an actual ground if there was 
uh, a negative or positive voltage available there. You have now created a path through your scope and it will promptly let the smoke out of your scope. It, it will and has and a lot of people have made these mistakes and tried to figure out what went wrong and not understood. It, they, you'll see forum posts once in a while, my meter just quit and there was a pot of smoke. Well, there, there's a half dozen situations, but this this can happen really easy. You you need to keep these on the same point on the circuit. Again, going back, this is only applicable when you're working on something that's hooked to mains power. If you're working on something that's fed by batteries, or fed from DC wall ward, that's only DC DC voltage available here, no worries. You don't need the isolation transformer, you can do it to your heart's content. The, the problem comes in is when people make the transition from working on small scale electronics to deciding to fix their TV or their LCD monitor. Uh, very easy for them to get into the power side and not the DC side and uh, well TVs is really dangerous in some cases on the older stuff but the LCD stuff there's still a high voltage power section where you get in there with your scope and you can do some bad things to yourself to the equipment and to your scope so anyway I'm just gonna post a link to the video that covers this a lot better than I just did but uh, just wanted to get this out there if you get a scope it's great you can do crazy incredible things it makes life so much easier but just be aware when you make the transition from small scale electronics to, say, uh, home uh, equipment plugged into mains power. Thanks for watching.